All right, so I have closed up the case. Um, let's see, since the last time I closed up the case, uh, I got the um, all the case hardware put on and torqued down. Um, and I uh, put on my uh, full flow oil pump. Um, I still have this one. I have some fittings that are going to show up for that. Um, I put Permatex under all of these washers of, of the case hardware. And I, what I was doing is uh, setting up my end play. So basically, if you look at this now, uh, when I turn this, it turns nice and freely. This is turning the cam, it's turning the oil pump, turning everything, uh, and the distributor as well. So that's great. Now in order to check end play, what I did is I got my end play shims. So like this guy here, um, you can see that that says uh, point, point 0.34, I assume that's a, yeah, 34. What I did is there's a 32 and a 36 and then three little, little no-name ones that are really thin. So what I did is I took the Initially, I took the 34 and the 36 and one of the thin ones and I put it on here. And my method for checking the end play, since I don't have the right gauges, um, was to take this bolt here and I push it all the way in. And then I screw this so that it's just lightly against the flat. He's right there. And then what I do is I yank it back. Um, like the, once it's in there, I, I yank this back and I take my feeler gauge. And the feeler gauge, I'm putting it on three thousandths here. You can see on this feeler gauge, let's see. You can read what that says. Yes, sorry, it is three thousandths. So what I want to do is, just like with the valves, I'm just checking the, uh, the the tolerance there, and basically it barely squeaks through that bolt with the flat area. So let's see if I look really close here. Um, what I did initially is it didn't fit. Only the 0.25 fit, so I exchanged out my 0.34 for my 0.32, therefore making it, uh, let's see, I put less shim on, which then gave me more end play. So now, I think this end play is perfect, and I'm going to, um, Proceed with uh, taking off the taking off the flywheel. I'm gonna put on my uh, seal uh, and my uh, O-ring, which I have, and I'm gonna uh, go from there. But as far as the rest of it goes, um, this is looking in, in really good shape here in terms of the, the flywheel, in terms of the bearings and everything turning nicely, everything clearanced. So I'm, ha I'm very happy with that. Okay. All right, so it's now time. I have my uh, end play set and then it looks good. I have basically three shims. It's a 32, the 36, and then one of the thin, sorry, 32, 36, and one of the thin ones, and that worked great. So I'm going to put some uh, grease on that, but beforehand I have this guy, which is the uh, O-ring. So I am going to use a little bit of the Permatex on there just because I, uh, I really don't want to have any oil leaks and I, 
I just have read some mixed things about whether you use this stuff on the on there or not. Uh, some people may be cringing when they see me do this, but I do not want any oil leaks, and I have a little oil leak on my my other uh, engine. So I'm just going to put that on there and slip this O-ring into the proper place back here. Okay, it's in there. Now I'm going to clean up the excess Permatex here. That looks good. Okay, now um, what I'm going to do is take some white grease and put it on these um, these guys here. Make sure that they slide well. Okay. If I put a little oil on there as well. I mean, the difference between white grease and assembly lube, you know, it's a mystery to me. But I just want to make sure that this is in good shape as far as sliding around before the... See, oil kind of drips a little more, so that's why you put that on there, it's going to turn into a mess. Okay, so I got that. And I have my O-ring on there. In here, I have my my three greased up shims in there. And now, what I've got to do is get this flywheel on there. Let's think if I'm forgetting anything else. Oh yeah, I got to do the got my seal right here. Alright, give me one sec to get this seal prepped. Alright, so I've got this seal here. So what I want to do is just check this guy will fit in there, which it does. So I've also heard that there's a some people don't use any sealants on that, and some people do. And I wanted to just put a very thin coat of Chromatex Aviation around this. And that is purely because I have another motor that I did and I think I have a tiny oil leak coming out of the main seal on that. So this is just a tiny, tiny thin coating of this. Also, I read that it can help it slide in since I'm just going to pound this in with a mallet. I have the tool which supposedly you use for this, but it's sort of a big washer that you clamp this down. But I'm going to take this guy and get it in there nice and even. All right, well, that was a huge pain. Um, I tried using the mallet for a little while. It didn't work very well. What I did is I put the Permatex on there and then actually, once the Permatex was on there, just a tiny thin coating, I was actually able with my thumbs to just grab this and really push it in there. And right now it's like maybe two millimeters recessed in inside of here. And I have my shims on there. And then since I had a little extra Permatex on there, I just took a paper towel with a little bit of a uh, parts cleaner and just went over this so that uh, basically that extra Permatex was off. So hopefully that is a recipe for no oil leaks, but we'll see. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and put this um, flywheel on there and then I can actually torque it down 
and this will be my final, you know, final placement of this, which is great. I will just wipe off the back of this flywheel first. Got some stuff dripped onto it. So as I said, I, I put in here the, the O-ring is already in there. And interestingly, there's always two of the dowel pins that are like a little bit further apart to that are a little closer apart. So then when you look on here, I find the two that are further apart and it's pointing up and to the left. So then I take that, that's where this goes here, up and to the left, like this should fit on. And it sure does. Okay. Now I can retest the end play after I get this on there. I wonder this has the has everything on there, the seal, the O-ring, and everything, so it's, it's a little bit harder for me to just push it on there by hand. My, Lock on there, and then let's see. Let me get my torque wrench, which is there's that thing. And this is about. I mentioned this is a foot and a half. This is a foot and a half long. So if I take this. If I torque this down with, and my body weight is about 175. So if I do 175 at a foot and a half to get 250, 200 to 250, really I want to put about half of my weight on there. So really is already probably it. Now some people will put Loctite on there. I'm not putting Loctite on there, but I have bounced on there a little bit with my... I said that's a pretty long torque wrench and I'm 175. I pretty much put uh, most of my weight on there at a foot and a half, which means that is going to probably be enough. No Loctite. So let me test one more time the end play on this do my trick that I did before. There's a nice little, there's a nice little um, thing right here. It's like a little plate. So what I do is I take this guy. And I screw this in all the way push it all the way in. Screw this down so that it's touching the little plate right here. So if I look at that, it's barely touching and I haven't screwed it hard enough to um, move it. Now I'm gonna yank this back. just see my feeler gauge. I am just hoping this is right on because this is one of those things that's a pain to fix now at this stage. Feeler gauge is here. This is still my three thousandths and let's hope that this just barely fits in there perfectly. Yeah, all right, so let's see. You can see that I've got it in there. And I have the feeler gauge. I mean, it's tight. The three, three thousandths is tight, but it does fit in there. So we're gonna call that a, we're call that a win. Let's check the 25 just for fun. Two thousandths. 25, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna do 
do this again. Push this in. It does seem to fit. It's pretty tight. It may also be the shape of this bolt. But there's my two thousandths. That fits through with no. Okay, well, I already messed with it, so. Down. Yeah, there's not a lot of end play. Just right, and now I just have a feeling that the end plate is right, but the way that I did the seal and everything is making it not quite so that I can't quite feel it. But I am gonna leave it as is. Um, it had a solid three thousandths when I did it before, so I tightened it a little bit tighter. That could account for it a little bit, but. If I can get the twenty the, the twenty-five thousandths through there uh, or the two and a half thousandths. Alright.